Thank you for joining us for the 20th season of WGAL8 Brain Busters. We're here at Studio A, where all crew, players, and audience members are fully vaccinated as we follow strict COVID protocols. From Studio A, this is WGAL8 Brain Busters. Now, here's your host, Rich Rosen. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome aboard. Our teams from Mechanicsburg and Lancaster Mennonite are ready to face each other. In less than 30 minutes, we will know which team will advance to round two. Who will it be? Well, let's start finding out right now with today's opening round. We have 10 point questions and one big brain buster brought to you by Turkey Hill. Good luck to all six of you. Pick up those signaling buttons. Let's use them frequently, beginning now with this 10 point question. Glacier Bay and the gates of the Arctic are two of the largest national parks in the United States. In what state are they located, Henry? Alaska. Alaska for 10 points, and that gets Lancaster Mennonite on the board. Every animal is designated by a genus and a species. What's ours? Jack. Homo sapiens. You are correct, and that gets Mechanicsburg on the board for 10 points. A piano has 88 keys. How many valves does a trumpet have? Jack again. Three. Three, correct again. It killed nearly half of the population of Western Europe in the 14th century. Jack. The Black Plague. The Black Plague or Bubonic Plague or Black Death is the correct, correct, correct response. Daniel Craig's most recent portrayal of James Bond is No Time to Die. In what 2006 movie did Daniel Craig debut as James Bond? Jack. Casino Royale. Correct again. Good for you. Twice every year in March and September, day and night are equally long everywhere on earth. What are these days called, Henry? Equinox. They are called equinox. Equinox means equal night. Chaucer's pilgrims rode to Canterbury, of course. What city did they ride from? Oh, we stumped you on London. It can be a group of stocks, the stakes in a bet, a kind of billiards, or something you swim in. What? Aiden. Pool. A pool is the four letter word, yes. On this scale, zero is calm, eight or nine is a gale, 10 or 11 is a storm, and 12 is a hurricane. What scale, Henry? Wind speed. No, I'm sorry, we can't accept it. What scale is used for measuring wind speed, Mechanicsburg? And it's called the Beaufort scale. And now it's time for the Big Brain Buster brought to you by Turkey Hill. For 10 points and a gift certificate for Turkey Hill ice cream for everyone on the team. You've put together half of a string quartet. You have a viola and a cello. What instrument do you need two of, Jack? A violin. You need two violins. Congratulations, Mechanicsburg. To get his New Deal programs through, he tried to pack, Jack? FDR. FDR tried to pack the Supreme Court with more justices. In 1881, he showed that animals could be immunized against anthrax by injecting them with a weakened form of the anthrax bacteria. Who was this French biochemist? Jack. Pasteur. He's the one, Louis Pasteur, right again. In mathematics, it's each number in a matrix. In chemistry, it's each number of the periodic table. What word has both, Sim? Element. Element is absolutely correct. In 1807, three years after he served as vice president, he was tried for treason for trying to establish a separate republic in the Southwest. Who was he? Uh, that's Henry. Jefferson Davis. Oh no, not he, sorry about that. Any idea Mechanicsburg? Oh, it's Aaron Burr. He was acquitted, but his political career was also over. It's the chemical formula for titanium nitride. It also spells the name of the element whose symbol is SN, Jack. Tin, T-I-N is the formula. The way to make automobiles, he said, is to make them all alike. To do that, he introduced Ford. Cohen. Ford introduced the moving assembly line to make the Model T. Good anticipation. A Wally jump, a Lutz, a sow cow, and an axle might all be seen in this performance. Jack. Figure skating? Figure skating is the Winter Olympic event. Jochebed was his mother, Amram his father, Miriam his sister, and Aaron his brother, Sim. Moses. Moses is the Old Testament leader. From 1934 to 1963, this small island in San Francisco Bay was the site, Jack. Alcatraz Island. Alcatraz was the federal prison known as The Rock. According to legend, this titan stole fire from Mount Olympus and Sim. Prometheus. Prometheus and gave it to mankind for all, for which Zeus chained him to a rock. If Dracula were still living, or at least undead in Transylvania, he would be in this Eastern European country. Henry. R Romania. Romania is where Transylvania is located. Each page has two columns of 42 lines printed in movable type. Who printed these Bibles in Mainz, Germany, and J? 
Jack. Um, oh, sorry. In yeah. Germany in 1455, Sim. Gutenberg. Gutenberg. Johann Gutenberg is the one. In the first decade of the 20th century, Lincoln Steffens, Ida Tarbell, and Upton Sinclair exposed corruption in American business and politics. Aiden. The jungle? No, sorry. Incorrect. What unflattering nickname did Theodore Roosevelt give them? They were called the Muckrakers. Yes, The Jungle was the book by Upton Sinclair. This 100-acre state, completely surrounded by Italy, was created in 1929. Henry? San Marino. Oh, no, sorry. What city is the smallest independent state in Europe? Vatican City. Vatican City is the correct answer in the 17th. Ooh, that sound takes us to the end of our first round. Wow, we have some really good players and a really great game going, 140 to 80. The one-on-one -on -one rapid fire and team lightning rounds will begin in just a few moments right after this break. WGAL8 Brain Busters will return after this. Participants on WGAL8 Brain Busters each receive a portable power bank for mobile devices, and the top four winning teams will share grants totaling $10,000. So good luck, teams. Now, here's Rich with our coaches and alternates. Well, hi, everybody. I'm glad you're back with WGAL8 Brain Busters here at Studio A because you're just in time to meet some other very important people, the coaches and alternates of our two teams, Mechanicsburg and Lancaster Mennonite. So first, right behind me here is Dr. Bradley Testa. He's the Business Department Coordinator at Mechanicsburg Area Senior High School. His first time here, thank you so much for bringing a team here and we really appreciate it. Next to him is the team's alternate today, Simon Stump. You are a sophomore and I know uh, you told me before the show that you're looking uh, forward to going to college and moving away from home and going in the dorm and having freedom. I know the feeling. Uh, next to uh, Mr. Stump is, oh, Owen Esch, and he's the alternate from Lancaster Mennonite. And you ride a unicycle, and uh, that's really impressive, and that's one of your possessions that you cherish. I'd like to see you ride it. It looks very scary. And uh, next to Owen is Mrs. Wendy Palmer, and she's the coach of the Lancaster Mennonite team. And thank you also for bringing a team to Studio A. And boy, have they done really well. Well, and now it's a battle of the minds, and it's ready to go on now with today's one-on-one -on -one rapid fire. Scores are looking good, 140 to 80. Mechanicsburg has a strong lead, but everything can change as we pit our individual players against each other. So first, in Mechanicsburg, let's say hello to Ethan Walter. You are a junior, and it's great to welcome you here. And uh, like we had talked about, what are you looking forward to uh, after high school? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to just branching out. I've been in Pennsylvania my whole life, so I kind of want to see what there is out there, what new cultures I can explore. Are you looking possibly to go to a school out of state? Yeah, certainly. Oh, excellent. I, I wish you the best of luck with those efforts. Henry Martin is a junior at Lancaster Mennonite, and it's great to welcome you here once again, because I know you've been here before, and you've had a lot of classes. And now that you're taking some more advanced classes, there's certain classes that really impact a student. And there's one in particular that has impacted you. Yes, I've been enjoying my history in, in government classes, so I'd hopefully like to go into the politics then. And those are advanced placement classes, yes? Mm -hmm. You really learn how to write well during those classes, I'm sure. Okay, well, Henry and Ethan, I hope you two are going to enjoy these three questions as we put you two one-on-one. -on -one. U.S. presidents are often associated with U.S. wars. Nixon is associated with the Vietnam War. Name the other president most associated with the war in Vietnam. Henry. Johnson. Johnson. Lyndon Johnson is a correct answer for 10 points. UPS is known as Big Brown. What company is known as Big Blue? Ethan? USPS. Uh, no, sorry. Good guess, though. Henry, any idea? Uh, we stumped you on IBM, International Business Machines. And finally, Euclid proved that there are an infinite number of them. What kind of number is divisible only by itself and one? Henry? Prime. Prime. You got in there first with that, and that's good because you really helped your team. 140 to 100. Let's now meet our two captains. First from Mechanicsburg, it's a pleasure to welcome Jack Cicero. You are a junior, and you did really well in that uh, first round of play. In fact, you dominated most of the questions. And uh, there must have been a class or a teacher that has impacted you to become such a fine student. Uh, yeah. Uh, physics and chemistry are the two classes that I'd say impact me the most. I'm really uh, just love the concept of taking something abstract like math and being able to 
apply it to something uh, concrete like explaining stuff in the everyday world. Well, so. and people who study physics know that everything is physics. Breathing is physics. Yes. Walking is physics. Everything yes. is physics. Playing this game is physics. Um, Aiden Grambaugh is a, a senior over at Lancaster Mennonite, and it's great to welcome you here. And, and like, like uh, we've asked you before, what are you looking forward to uh, after uh, high school, which is coming up very soon for you? I think I'm just looking forward to the ability to take things that I'm interested in. I've always been interested in like chemistry, biology, just things like that. And I think being in college, I'll be able to take the majorly advanced versions of those and just see like the really cool things that you don't get to examine in high school. And, and plus you're around people that have the same interests as you and that really are passionate about learning and growing. Aiden and Jack, I hope you're passionate about these three questions as we put you two one on one. The description of the book begins, two longtime friends share an intimate and urgent conversation about life, music, and their love of America. Who are the authors, a politician and singer of renegades born in the USA? Uh, they've been all over the TV recently. It's President Barack Obama and Bruce Springsteen. Casablanca is the largest city in this North African country. Where is it, Jack? Morocco. Morocco is the correct answer. And now it's time for the Millersville Epic Question of the Week. It's a process in which the nucleus of the cell divides to form two new nuclei. What is it called? Jack. Mitosis. Mitosis is a correct answer. Good for you. 150 to 100. We're now going to meet our third players. And first in Mechanicsburg, it's a pleasure to welcome Cohen Mangus. Mangus, did I say that correctly? Mangus. Mangus, Mangus is a, a junior uh, at Mechanicsburg. And, um, you know, you're busy, obviously. You do your homework every day after school, I'm sure. But you must have some fun. What do you do uh, for fun outside of school? I run almost every day. It's a big passion of mine. So do you just like get home from school? Do you run for school for cross country or do you do it on your own? Cross country and track and I usually run with people at my school. Oh, excellent. Good for you. Keeps you in good shape, no doubt. Uh, Sim Spurrier is a freshman uh, at Lancaster Mennonite. It's great to welcome you here. And you, in, in a very young age, went uh, on a trip of a lifetime to Africa? Yes. Um, my grandparents were missionaries over there. They're retired now, but we got to come over and see them spend some time there, see new animals, interact with cultures, and it was just a wonderful experience. Yes, I, I've been to Africa once. I'm looking forward to going back. It's an experience of a lifetime. Uh, Sim and Cohen, hopefully these three questions will be an experience of a lifetime as we put you two one on one. Walking down this street, you'll pass the National Archives, the FBI building, and the White House. What is this historic street in Washington, D.C.? Cohen. Pennsylvania Avenue. Pennsylvania Avenue is correct. The poem that established his reputation appeared in the 1916 collection, Mountain Interval. Who was the New England author of Birches, The Road Not Taken, and Mending Wall? Sim. Robert Frost. He's the one. And finally, in ordinary language, the opposite of sharp is dull. To a musician, what is the opposite of sharp? Sim. Flat. Flat is absolutely correct. Look at those scores, 170 to 110. We're going to pick up the pace now and play today's 60 seconds in lightning round. Aiden, your team is behind at this point, but only by 60 points. So you have the privilege, if you will, of selecting first among these three quizzes. We have ease into it, some threesomes, and potpourri. What do you guys think? Ease into it. Ease into it is great. Ease into it? Ease into it for 10 excellent points each. Let's ease into some questions about people, places, and things whose names all begin with the letter E. Aiden, I take your answer as the team's answer. Henry and Sim are ready to help you along. 60 seconds on the clock, which will begin after I finish reading the first question. So good luck, and here we go. Einstein's famous equation for the relationship between energy and mass. E equals mc squared. Correct. The motto of the United States, Latin for one out of many. E plurus unum. Correct. It's the electronic alternative to the U.S. Postal Service. Uh, email. Correct. According to the book of Genesis, she's the mother of us all. Eve. Eve. Eve is correct. It was built from 1817 to 1825 to connect the Hudson River with Lake Erie. Oh, the Erie Canal. Erie Canal. Correct. It's what EPA stands for. Uh, Environmental Protection Agency. Correct. His real name is Marshall Mather. He's also Slim Shady. Eminem. Uh, M &M. Correct. This country borders Colombia and Peru. Ecuador. Ecuador. George wrote novels like Silas Marner. T.S. wrote poems like The Wasteland. Elliot. Edgar. Since 2002, this has been the common currency for most of Europe. Uh, uh, Euro. The, that's correct. The part of your body where you'll find a hammer, an anvil, and a stirrup. Ear. The ear. He was the last general to be president of the United States. Eisenhower. Eisenhower. Eisenhower, yes. A casino in Las Vegas or King Arthur's sword. Excalibur. Correct. Called the Gateway to the North. It's the capital of Alberta, Canada. Winnipeg. 
Winnipeg? Edmonton. It's the formula x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. That's an ellipse. Excellent teamwork. Great job. 12 correct. So 120 points came your way. Okay, Jack, you have your work cut out for you now with our two remaining quizzes. We have some threesomes and potpourri. What do we think? A three? Potpourri or? Sure, potpourri. Potpourri. Uh, if you're hungry for potpourri, here's your chance to eat your fill. For 10 points each, identify this variety of people, places, and things. So, Jack, I take your answer as the team's answer. Ethan and Cohen are ready to help you along. 60 seconds on the clock, which will begin after I finish reading the first question. Good luck, and here we go. What canal runs through Central America? Panama Canal. Correct. Ahab is the peg-legged captain who's chasing this whale. Uh, the white whale. Moby Dick. In what war was the Battle of Bumper Hill, Bunker Hill fought? Uh, American Revolution. Correct. The Treasure State or Hannah or uh, Miley Cyrus character? Uh, pass. Montana. By definition, what is one divided by infinity equal to? Zero. Zero. What is the first line of the 23rd Psalm? Pass. The Lord is my shepherd. What kind of table did Dmitry Mendeleev uh, create? Periodic table. Correct. In what book did we learn that war is peace, freedom is slavery, and ignorance is strength? Pass. 1984. What was the first state to secede from the Union in December 1860? South Carolina. Correct. What is the color of most sapphires? Blue. Blue. Yes. What Olympic event is slightly more than 42 kilometers long? Marathon. Correct. What instrument is commonly used to measure atmospheric pressure? Barometer. Correct. Otto von Bismarck became the first chancellor of this country in 1871. Germany. Germany, yes. Which continent is officially classified as a desert? Antarctica. Antarctica, yes. Who published the interpretation of dreams? Singapore, right on the buzzer. Ten correct. A hundred points came your way. Wow, look at these scores. 270 to 240. Our, our teams are just uh, narrowly apart as we now reveal today's bonus Brain Buster category. During our break, our teams will wager zero, five, or ten points based on their knowledge of historical dates. That's good for high school students. So we'll have the bonus Brain Buster and, of course, the all-important final frenzy when WGALA Brain Busters continues after this break. Watch all this season's episodes of WGAL8 Brain Busters anytime on WGAL.com. Our online home also includes our tournament schedule and a chance to learn more about the show and host Rich Rosen. Go to WGAL.com and click on Brain Busters. Well, you're back and we welcome you back to WGAL8 Brain Busters here at Studio A with Mechanicsburg and Lancaster Mennonite. And look at those scores. Our teams are just separated by a very narrow margin as we head into today's bonus Brain Buster. During our break, each individual player wagered zero, five, or ten points based on their knowledge of historical dates. Let's go to the News A Newsroom with Jerry Gish. He has today's question. Jerry. Thanks, Rich. And now here's your bonus Brain Buster question. On August 6, 1945, the United States bombed Japan at Hiroshima. What happened on December 7, 1941? Again, on August 6, 1945, the United States bombed Japan at Hiroshima. What happened on December 7, 1941? Good luck with your answer. Now back to Studio A. Rich. Thanks, Jerry. Good luck, players. We'll give you about five seconds. Aiden's pen is close. I don't think this question was very difficult because everybody seemed eager to write their answer. So, Ethan, we start with you. And did you come up with the right answer? The bombing of Pearl Harbor, of course. Five points is added to your score. Good for you. Jack. And what, Japan. Japan surrendered. Oh, no. Sorry. So uh, that makes that uh, so zero points so far. So we're deducting five points. Cohen, it's up to you. VJ Day. No, but a zero wager. So right now, there's no points added to your score. Henry, it's up to you. Did you come up with Pearl Harbor? And that's Pearl Harbor. Good for you. Ten-point wager. Wow. Aiden. Pearl Harbor, the bombing of, uh, no, sorry, yeah. so we're going to duck zero from you, keeping you at 10 points. Sam, did you come up with Pearl Harbor? Pearl Harbor, five points, 15 points added to your score. There we go, 275 to 265 as we head into today's final frenzy. In 1513, 20-point questions, in 1513, he boldly claimed the entire Pacific Ocean for Spain. Who was this Spanish explorer? Jack. Ferdinand Magellan? No, sorry, not he. Aiden. 
Cortez? No, you're both incorrect. It's Balboa, 270 to 255, a correction on the score. In 2021, a series of stone holes that follow the circle's outline has been unearthed. Earlier in 2009, archaeologists announced the discovery of a second stone circle, only a mile from this monument on Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire, England. Sim? Stonehenge. Stonehenge is correct. These disc-shaped blood structures have several functions. Aiden? Platelets? Platelets is correct. It's a small class of yellow supergiant stars that brighten and dim, and dim at regular periods. Uh, uh, Jack? Pulsars. Uh, no, I can't accept it. I'm going to complete the question for Lancaster Mennonite. The brighter the star, the greater the period. What are these stars called? Aiden? Quasars? Uh, no, they're called variable stars. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. These, Jack. Miranda rights? The Miranda rights is correct. He wears a top hat with a card that reads, in this style, 10 shillings, six pence. In Tim Burton, Burton's version of Alice in Wonderland, he's played by Johnny Depp, Sim. Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter is the literary character. One of the island's Las Palmas has recently experienced volcanic eruptions. Uh, Henry. The Canary Islands. The Canary Islands is correct. He is 16 years old, six feet two and half inches tall, and failing four of the five courses he's taking at Pensy Prep. So he runs away to New York. Who is the central character in The Catcher in the Rye? Oh, it's Holden Caulfield, one of the great literary characters of all time. It's a mathematical expression that combines variables, constants, and exponents. For example, 4x squared plus 7x minus 3. Dramatic. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, what is it called, Aiden? Polynomial? It's called a polynomial. In the morning, he attended a fundraising event at the Washington Monument, then gobbled down some raw cherries and ice milk, got cramps, and died. Who was this president quickly replaced by Millard Fillmore? Henry? Uh, Arthur? No, sorry, incorrect. Jack? Tyler? Zachary Taylor is the correct answer. Adolf Hitler was de Fuhrer, the leader. Which of Hitler's contemporaries was El Caudillo, which also means the leader? Henry? Mussolini? No, not he. Sorry, Jack. Franco? Franco. Francisco Franco. In ballet, it's the position in which the dancer stands on one leg with the other. Ooh. That sound takes us, it was an era best. That sound takes us to the end of the round and to the end of the game. It looks like Lancaster Mennonite was triumphant with a score of 355, but with a score of 310, we most certainly will see Mechanicsburg in the wild card spot, I'm pretty certain. So coming up on the next uh, show, we, we have more coming up in just a short moment or two. Scorekeeping for WGAL8 Brain Busters, presented by Jennings College Consulting, where students discover the right college fit for the future. We'll return after this. Welcome back to WGAL8 Brain Busters, the Susquehanna Valley's longest running high school quiz show. Once again, here's your host, Rich Rosen. Well, welcome back. That was a great game. Congratulations, Mechanicsburg and Lancaster Mennonite. Now, Lancaster Mennonite is guaranteed a position in round two. Will we see Mechanicsburg again? Well, we're going to find out very soon. But coming up on the next WGALA Brain Busters, it's Ephrata versus Spring Grove. We're expecting a very exciting match, and we hope to have the pleasure of your company as well. From all of us here at Studio A, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. So long for now.